Hi there, I'm Thack. I am working on a project with a skull and cross motif. Skulls and crosses. Uh, in today's video, we'll be forming the skull, which is the, probably by far the coolest portion of this whole project. So I'll be starting with a piece of three quarter inch square bar, just mild steel. So let's begin. First step is putting an inch over the outside edge of the anvil. And I want to bring that down on a 90. Oops. Once I've got it down on a 90, I want to curl it back on itself. At the same time, I'm rounding it out, trying to form the back of the skull here. Okay, so now that I've got it in two dimensions there now, it's time to start rounding out the edges. Okay, so that is step one there. And you can see I've rounded that over. I've got a nice, very recognizable shape of the back of a skull there. So that all rounded out and everything is ready to go. So now we're able to move on to our next step, which is gonna be dropping in the cheeks. All right, so step two is to get it into the spring fuller here. And right at the base of the cranium there is where I want to drop in the cheeks. And that should be deep enough now. I'm just going to bring forge down below that. So that's the cheeks in there, that's brought that down there, giving me shape, this will be, become the jaw part here and the face will be happening like right in there. I'll be pushing the eyes out. So that is our starting shape. I just want to knock the corners off what will be the top of the jaw. And now I just want to take a final look at the skull itself there. I'm trying to put a bit of a center crown on there. And we are ready to go to the vise. So now the facial features are going to start happening. So we switch, everything's gonna happen in the vise now, holding it there, and then with various punches, I will start popping in the facial features. So these are the tools that I'll be using. I think this should do the whole process here. A dull center punch, a really dull center punch, a sharp hot chisel, a dull small hot chisel, and then this is my sculpting tool. I don't really have a name for it, but I can push flat areas in and control that with the radius. So these are the tools I'm using. Let's get started. So I get this nested in the vise here, back of the skull against the top of the vise. And I'm gonna start with the eyes. And they start close together. I wanna get them seated nice and centered and symmetrical to each other. And once I've got them started, I can start sinking them in. As I start sinking them in, I push them out and down. Pretty much lost my heat there. Now that it's getting cooler, your camera might be able to get a little bit better focus on what's going on in here. But you can see I started out with the eyes as just little center punch dots and then I'm pushing them out and squaring them off for lack of a better term. Pushing up those two edges out and up to kind of square that off. So I've got most of the depth in there for the eyeballs now, the orbital sockets. So I'm gonna get it hot again, push up the nose and then do some more shaping on the eyes. Taking the center punch and I'm gonna do the nose now. So I'm gonna start low. 
going kind of straight in just to start. And then very quickly, I start slanting and pushing upwards. So started coming in at a 90 and then end up pretty much at a 45. I'm just shoving that up to get that shape, the bridge of the nose. And now I'm just going to drop those walls in a little bit. Okay, that's the nose. Let's take a look at this dusty old skull here. Um, this is my little anatomical reference that I use. I've got the bridge of the nose form there. I've got the eyes pushed in there. What I need to do now is drop back the cheeks and push them up. I've got quite a bit of height in the head is here as well. So I wanna push this whole, these cheeks up and back. That'll be our next heat. All right, so now I'm gonna actually just come in with a hot chisel to start just to establish where I want to push up the cheeks. So I've got that, I move to my flat tool. I wanna push up, but I also want to push back change of plane for the cheeks. I always find it funny how the expression on these things change as you do this. I've got very sad eyes on the skull now. He seems a little concerned with what's going on. But we can uh, change that out. Doing a skull out of three quarter like this, I tend to keep the detail pretty crude. Um, you can you can capture the idea of what a skull is up without getting too anatomically specific or crazy on something like this. When I work on figure stuff, like I've got some skulls that my cameraman will be showing you probably right now, um, out of inch and a half square, which is so double double the size of the steel, which is quadruple the volume, which is a lot exponentially more material to work with. So where I can work on a skull like this and, and make a skull out of three quarter in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes at most, um, when I'm working with inch and a half, it's taking me about two hours of hard work to get a skull out because there's so much more volume, so much more to move, but I can get a lot more detail. So you can see the difference in detail. Back on the eye this time, trying to work on the shape. Gonna put a hint of brow in there. Some of you might be surprised to know that skulls don't actually have expressions in their anatomically correct form, but a lot of the motifs that you'll see, you put the angry eyes on the skull and that tends to be by putting the brows on there. I always tend to put a hint of that, give it that little bit of badassery, if you will. It's what people tend to want when they're looking at a skull. really high top of the skull on this one. It's almost got that Aztec feel where they used to take their baby's heads and squash them out. It's a little bit long in there. Um, the thing with skulls is you gotta do the, a lot of them to kind of figure out what your proportions are because where you start a certain thing, it's gonna shove the steel around that bit of volume and you have to kind of train yourself as to um, where you need to be at any stage in the process to end up with the right proportion. So it just takes a little bit of experience to do that. And I don't do this enough to always nail it. Although I've done a lot of skulls over the years. I'm right down in the black heat range. So probably like 800 degrees Fahrenheit at this point, maybe lower than that, but I, I'm pretty much just working cold right now. You can put in some of the detail that way. 
All right, that is not bad. I don't think I'm gonna fuss with it too much more. Let's move down and get the actual um, teeth in there and that will finish off this skull. All right, time for a little dental work. Once again, I'm gonna come in at a 90, a little lower than where I wanna end up. I'm gonna start my cut and then I'm going to push up. And actually round it towards the back of the cheek there, the zygomatic arch, which I'm not actually putting in. That's a detail on the side there that I won't do on something this small and rudimentary. Okay, so I've got them that defined now. I'm gonna come in with my smaller chisel here and start in the center. And just kind of Punisher style, I just wanna put some vertical lines in there to establish the teeth. And this is something you can spend some time on and you can actually sculpt the top of the teeth and put their little uh, V arch in top of there and the double groove, uh, the opposite groove there, push that down to make the teeth kind of pronounced. You can spend quite a bit of time on there and get some really cool detail. In this case, because I'm just trying to sell this at a, a glance, you know, just a skull thing, I think I can just stay with the very simple Punisher style teeth on there. I think most of you will know what I mean when I say Punisher. And let's knock some of the scale off here and see how we're doing. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll just kind of video define the canines there a little bit. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Certainly not anatomically correct um, compared to a real skull, but you still get the idea there. That is definitely a skull. So there we have it, uh, skull forging. The skull can be used, this motif can be used for a number of things and, and really lends itself well to some really cool end treatments for a bar. Um, you can do hundreds of different things with this skull once you, you know how to make it. I'm gonna be doing this skulls and crosses mo motif for a project that you'll see in a following video. So join us in our next video where I'll be forming the crosses and then in a following video, we'll be putting the whole thing together and making something pretty cool. So hope you join us for that. In the meantime, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. Comments below, all that stuff. Thumbs up, yeah, or thumbs down, whatever. Yeah, hope to see you next time. Back out.